So welcome along to Chess with Dave. I hope you like. Hi there, and thank you for tuning in. Hi there. I wish to bring you this three minute game that occurred just prior. It's two and a half each. And this is our fourth game. Hi. This is a game that occurred just before. Hi. This three minute game occurred a wee while ago. My opponent and I have two and a half each, so that's five games. This is game six. This resulted in a very interesting bishop and pawning game, which I wish to share with you. I hope you like it, and here it is here. So obviously we're at the starting position, so I'm not going to go right through the whole game. I'm just going to show you the resulting end game bishop and pawn end game, which is very, very important for you and me to know about end games and that sort of thing. Not to say, of course, that my play is impeccable or my opponent's play is definitely not impeccable because the result was not very good for my opponent. So here is the scene game and I hope you like it. And I have the white pieces of course and black has the black pieces. So let's begin here. First of all, I have just played Rook D1 and we've had a sort of a very equal sort of a middle game and opening. So I haven't really been able to get away with anything with my opponent too much. And so here, of course, black cannot capture the B pawn of mine on B2 as Rook D8 check will result in checkmate the next move. So here's rook d1, bishop d1. As promised, we enter into a bishop and pawn endgame. Now, there's no real advantage. In fact, if there's an advantage for anyone, it will be for black, because black has their pawns on good squares comparative to my pawns, which are on g3 and g2 as well, you see. So we've both got we've both got these islands. I've got these double pawns on g3 and g2 and f2. So I've got two islands of pawns and black's got probably a healthier island of pawns which is four and two hanging pawns and four whereas I've got whatever but I've got these double pawns, which would be all right, all right if it was the middle game. I could have a rook on here and a rook on here and a queen capturing this pawn with check and all that sort of stuff, blah, blah, blah. So here we go without further ado. The ending that occurred here. Okay, so here we got F6. So already black's getting their king into activity and also black is also getting their pawns off white squares. Bishop h5. So the king says, well, you want to go that way? I don't care. I'll just go on the black squares. You can't hit me on the black squares. A3. So I'm trying to get my pawns off the white squares otherwise the bishop can attack them so obviously i'm not going to go king e3 next move but my opponent's going king c5 what my opponent's play like magnus what do i do now don't know bishop e2 i'm going to try to eliminate the chances of black um entering into my camp with their king which looks quite deadly really so my pawns are not looking very good. Bishop b5. We have an offer of a uh, swap here. And it might just end up into an end game where uh, we both draw again. So we end up with three out of three out of six each. So two draws and two wins. But I have different plans 
I played Bishop F3 thinking, voila, I can, but if Bishop C6, I don't know, probably will get a draw. I don't mind. So here is A6. What? My opponent has just blundered. Bishop B7. Well, thanks, opponent. But hang on, they're going for King C4 to B3 to B2 and C3 and A3. So I go Bishop E6. And here. So here we come to the first part of this position. I have a very strong C pawn if King B2. So my opponent plays King B2. And my opponent has 128 and I've got 46 seconds left. C4. Bishop there. Have I got time for that? Can I not just go Bishop D5 first? And start marching? I don't think this is a... a you know, I don't think this is a very good idea. Uh, but, obviously, my opponent doesn't play King A3 as Bishop H7. And maybe Bishop D3 and Bishop to F1. But I've still got to watch that A pawn, don't I? So Bishop D5 here is... A sensible move and now I've positioned my bishop to be able to support the pawn march from c4 to c8 with the bishop protecting both those c6 and c8 squares so that's quite good was it lucky here it's now bishop a6 is threatened and c5. So we've got quite a tangy endgame still. We've got king a3, c6. Moves away. Don't know. Did white just get a tempi there? c7 or black? c8, bishop c8, a4. a4, and we have. Bishop e6, of course. I've now got to return the favour and offer um, white. Now offer, I have to offer black the opportunity to get their bishop back and I play a misdemeanor here. I should play f5 and make it clean because then I can just march my king up to here. And take this and this and march the f pawn and take the h pawn if I have to. But this and when the a2 pawn comes around, then I have to um, get rid of that. How much time have I got? 30 seconds. And I do want to go somewhere. I've got something on my mind to do. But uh, I, I've come here on, I've come here on here instead. To do this for you i hope you enjoy it <laughs> and so um yeah so i should play f5 holding back um the f6 and the g7 pawn and fix them down so that white can enter their king into uh h5 but i mean there's still the problem of h5 isn't there oh dear so that's chess, isn't it? Chess is like that. So maybe I played it okay. So I didn't play it. The, the computer will probably say I played it terribly. But um, here is my king march to f3. I've got to get, move my king there. Otherwise, we're just going to look at the pawns like we would if I was a junior and my opponent was a junior. And we just sit there and go, oh, we've got three pawns each after bishop a2. We've got three pawns each. It must be a draw. That reminds me of what they do in school tournaments. School student, school chess tournaments and all that sort of stuff. That's what they do. They just look at the position. They go, oh, three pawns each. Uh, they don't look at what's happening in the position. And they just say, it's a draw, it's a draw. I go, no, it's not. That's a win for white. Because the king's so close to the pawns. Whereas the other king is far, far away. 
Uh, so there you go. So king f3, a2. So I was ready for maybe my opponent plays a trick here and doesn't play a2, plays king a1 or king b1, and I play bishop a2. And then my opponent just takes my bishop with their king, if it's check or if it's just the king on a1, goes king a2. That happens in lightning chess, bishop a2. So here, it looks like I'm just going to clean up, doesn't it? Well, here's what I was talking about, f5, and then, oh, but what about h5? Is it g6? Oh, no. Okay, well, my opponent's wriggling, eh? And now I have to be uh, uh, worrying about h5. My opponent's actually doing quite well, but I don't think my opponent can really keep me from coming into these pawns. So here we've got king h4, king h5, king g6, king takes, and it doesn't really matter which one I take here, but it, I thought it did, but I want to be close to my g4 pawn. Once it goes to g4, then I'm on one step behind by playing king f5 now so it's a little bit different if i take the f5 pawn then i have to go king f6 so it gives white black the opportunity to to come closer to my pawns on g g file two of them but so i um capture the deep position of the pawn rather than going there afterwards and picking it up sort of thing i don't know i think i'm trying to say something there but i don't know what it is and here's king f5 and it's more or less now where my opponent now resigns so it's three and a half two and a half hope you enjoyed this session this is bishop of pawn end games it's not exactly a really really good bishop and pawn end game but I think it's quite instructive in what happens often in bishop or pawn end games or bishop and knight end games and that sort of thing. So all the best with your chess, no matter where it's at. And thank you very much for watching this. I really appreciate you watching. I hope you got something out of this. Uh, you could even get something out of it by knowing how I think about the end game and that I'm not meticulously... Uh, got knowledge that one can sort of draw on in a game of chess with me to say oh i know what he misses out on he doesn't know about this or that or triangulation and all those sorts of things i know a wee bit about those sorts of things but um yeah and they're actually in a, a short or a long that i've done here on this chess channel bye for now i'm going to bring some porn moves i'm going to bring some games i played today as well in a long video where i actually um where i actually played normal openings normal openings i lost one though so take a look at some of our native indigenous New Zealand coastline of the east coast of New Zealand, the South Island, of course, near Dunedin. Hope you enjoyed that wee clip and thank you very much. I appreciate you.